the Joe Rogan experience. And I did that for like three years, like chasing it, going to tryouts, things like that, sending tapes to, to agents and things like that. And it just didn't pan out. Nothing stuck. You know, I had opportunities. They ju I just wasn't the same player. And I can admit that. And I'm comfortable with that because I know I had a successful basketball career. It just didn't go to the level where I made millions of dollars. So after that, man, I was literally stuck after traveling around the world. I ended up in Malaysia. I was in Australia trying Malaysia. to pursue. Malaysia? You don't want to know how I ended up over I there. I do want to know. Man, this is funny. <laughs> Only a few people know this story. So... <laughs> When you're at your bottom, you try to find something for comfort. I, I've never done weed or anything in my life, but I, I was addicted to like online dating back then. Really? I, yes, I was like trying to meet girls, like just to try to find some situation. I felt like, oh, I feel incomplete, so let me like online date or whatever. And I met this girl, like one of my friends in Phoenix played basketball in Kuala Lumpur. So obviously you need a visa to go over there. So I'm thinking to myself, like, what's the... The, the way I could get over there to Kuala Lumpur and try to play basketball. So I was like online dating. I don't even remember what website well, I it was. I say you're a good looking guy. I know. How are you not getting girls in America? I do. But <laughs> I, I'm just saying, I was just, listen, my whole point. I'm sorry, go ahead. My point was, I literally met this girl in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. She was from Canada. She was a singer over there singing in little military bars or whatever, little hot blonde or whatever she was. And, um, I remember talking to her for about a month and I convinced her that I wanted to come visit her. But my whole intention was let me get over there, try to find out what this team is and see if I can like try out for them. Some crazy shit. You don't do that today. I did it back then. So I went over there to, <laughs> I'm laughing because I know people that know me is dying <laughs> listening to this right now. This is a true 100% story. I get over there to Malaysia with no money. I may have $400. I got people to pay for a ticket yeah i'm going to malaysia to play basketball just lying to people right so i get over there this girl i don't want to say her name she might sue me uh but <laughs> she picked me up at the airport she looked exactly like her pictures beautiful from canada everything so she, she take me to her apartment she got this nice apartment it's like in the jungle joe like i'm talking about the balcony i seen like little monkeys on the balcony whoa yes it was crazy and then it's like a rainforest right and then in Malaysia, if you ever been to Malaysia, I don't know if it's like that now. The doors are high off the ground, like two inches. So it's like anything can crawl under the doors or whatever. So that's the first thing I noticed when I got to Malaysia. I was like, this is some crazy shit, right? We're in the jungle and the door. Like, what about snakes or bugs? I remember asking these little kids when I first got to Malaysia. I was like, have you ever seen a snake like it, in this area? And it was like, yeah, I seen a cobra. And all this stuff, and I was just like, holy shit. But the, back to her, she turned out to be a sex addict. Yes. Congratulations. Man, listen. <laughs> Yo, this is crazy. Like, Because this is way before I ever decided to, I'm going to do f film for a living, right? Mm -hmm. I was over there. Um, the first day I got there, like I had a good time with her. Then I you know, ended up having relations with the lady. And she turned out to be a sex addict. So, you know, as a man, I just flew all the way across the world to see this girl. You sleep with her, and then all of a sudden, she want to do it again and again and again. And then when you, like, slow down, like, you know, I just got here. She, bro, she started crying and going nuts. And I'm in Malaysia. I'm like, I don't know who this girl is. Oh, no. Listen. She's crying because you won't fuck her again? Yes. How many times did you fuck her? About two times. <laughs> and she wanted to <laughs> Yeah. You two long times, too. Like, <laughs> shit. Like, it was crazy. So, this, I am, listen, I am in Malaysia. This right, I'm right. not in America. I'm right. in Malaysia. So, the crazy thing is, probably after a week, she started to go crazy and complain about, I'm not sleeping with her. I'm, a, I'm, in, my, I'm in my prime, my sexual peak, and you don't want to sleep with me. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, I don't know what the fuck am I doing over here in Malaysia like with this lady. So I ended up meeting this black guy uh, that she introduced me to that was like a hustler in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And I started hanging out with him just to get out of the house. <laughs> and <laughs> You're like living with this I don't girl. have any money to go home. Oh, my so God. So I'm just stuck in Kuala Lumpur, oh Malaysia. Oh, my God. With this beautiful girl that you have to fuck all the time. Yep. <laughs> First world problems, right? Serious first, first and world problems. And then she started problems. getting even bitter. Like, I hate Americans. You Americans are so ungrateful. And all. I'm just thinking like, damn. Wow, you're representing America. Yeah, it was crazy. I was like, damn, I must have just didn't do it good enough. <laughs> <laughs> so 
like I thought I was. <laughs> girls be lying then to me, right? Well, maybe she is just extraordinary. News. She was like in her late thirties, and I was in my early twenties. So some girls in their late thirties, they hit this itchy peak. Man, they're just like all the time. She ended up. She ended up kicking me out of her house in Malaysia, Joe. Wow. Like uh, I went out with Bobby one night. This dude, his name was Bobby too, and um. I came home and she said, um, your stuff is outside. Like she texted me. I had a little international phone. She was like, your stuff is outside. I'm thinking like, she was like, yeah, this is not working out. So think about that. Imagine being in another country and this is not working out. No money. No money. Zero. Oh. Not a dime. And I, the guy that I was with, I told him what happened. He was like, I'm going to take you over there, get your stuff. You can stay with me until you figure it out. I get there and all my stuff is outside. Everything. She's not there. She's done left or whatever. And I had some brand new Timberlands. Remember the Boots Timberlands? Sure. Hey, I'm poor as shit. I need them Timberlands. They in the house. I had them worn brand new. So I kicked the door down. Boom. Oh, no. Yes. Like I was trying to get in the door. I just kicked it. And it broke. Like the little handle broke. I got in, got my Timberlands left. I remember she texted me. She was like, hey, did you break my door? I was like, nah, I don't know what you're talking about. I just left. So from there, I, was, I stayed with Bobby for like three weeks in Malaysia. I was hanging out with him every day, going to parties, and I'm like, bro, I got to get home to America. So I contacted my one of my uh, mentors growing up uh, in Australia. He was playing pro professional basketball in Melbourne. His name was Rashad Tucker. Shout out to him. And I convinced him to get me a ticket to come over to Melbourne because I was like, bro, I need some money to go home. And he was like, nah, man, I'll just get you a ticket to come to Melbourne. <laughs> I was like, bro. Literally, like, I, I'm trying to go back to America. I don't know what to. But then when he, he sold me on, I was like, damn, I really ain't going back to nothing. So let me go. He was like, man, you can come over here and try out for the team. You can try out practice with us. And I was like, oh, that may be my opportunity to play professional basketball. If I, He's one of the top players in Australia. So I ended up in Melbourne. And I was in Melbourne for three months not doing shit but going out practicing with the team this day was mid-season so I couldn't like make a team because they was already you know they think and then I ended up getting stranded over there too <sighs> because he left me because he cheated on his girlfriend and uh <laughs> he had to go make up with her so he left me talking about I'm gonna be back and then I was just stuck in Australia like yo bro I need to get back to America no was, job no job no, no money, money nothing oh my god he was like uh I'm glad I was young when I did all this stuff. He was like, hey, man, tell her, tell one of them girls a sob story. They get you a st <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, a sob story? <laughs> Bro, you have money. Buy me a ticket to go home. Man, I can't do it right now. I'm like, man. So I had to tell this girl a sob story. Her name was Deanna. Deanna Kassar. I'm giving her a shout out because she saved my life. She bought me a ticket home. She She went in her savings and bought me a ticket back from... Melbourne to Ho Honolulu to Las Vegas. And um, I didn't know why I chose Las Vegas, but I just chose to go to Las Vegas. So you literally had zero money. Zero, zero money. Zero job. How were you eating? Shit. Her. People that I was around, right? They just fed you. Yeah. Man, wow. sometimes you have angels in your life. Yeah. And I guess these people were angels to, because that's what, I was just telling Jamie, like I just seen a documentary on homelessness. It was like four out of five people in L.A. County, paycheck to paycheck. I think mm. it was like eight, like, or it's four out of five people are like one $400 emergency from being broke. Or it was like 80% of people live paycheck to paycheck. So I always tell people like when, when I'm inspiring people now, I'm like, bro, I was homeless once because that's essentially homelessness. Yeah. If you ain't got an address, you can't pay bills, you're homeless. Yeah. No matter if you got a roof over your head. And I, I feel like people... You see all these beautiful moments that I do now or what anybody do, does and they don't see the, the story that ultimately led you. Like what what ultimately turned to you doing what you're doing now? So after Australia, I went to Vegas. I was living with two strippers. Yes, I lived with two strippers. Congratulations again. Yeah, I lived in Vegas with two strippers that worked at the Rhino, the Spearman Rhino. I met them on Craigslist for rooms to rent. Jesus Christ. And I had enough money, like $600, to move into uh, a room. So I literally moved in with these girls. And one day, have you ever been in the Vegas casinos? Because this is like the climax. You, you ever seen like the mega bucks yes. slots? Sure. So one day, it was Floyd Mayweather versus Oscar De La Hoya. So that was the year. I was in the, the Mirage, 
and I seen these two hot black girls. And I had like some money in my pocket, a hundred or something. So I wanted to sit down next to him. So I went over there and sat next to him and was just, you know, trying to shoot the shit. And I put a $20 in on the slots because, you know, you can get free drinks if you put in a slot. So I just hitting it, talking to him, where y'all from? Y'all going to fight, blah, blah, blah. And then one of the girls was like, hey, you won. I was like, oh, okay. You know, you think you ain't winning no slots. Guess how much I won? How much? $9,000. Whoa. Swear to God. $9,000 to somebody broke. Wow. Yes, $9,000. So, and when they give you that, do you pay taxes on it later? Or yeah, I gave him a wrong social security number, though. You gave him the wrong social security number? Yeah, I gave him the wrong social security number. <laughs> they, you could do that? Yeah, because they just asked you your name and social security number. Oh, okay. Maybe you shouldn't have just told everybody that. I don't know. They, don't, they can't prove that I won anything. They can't? That was like 12 years ago. They didn't have records back then? No, I don't think so. I hope not. Nah, me too. Okay. Ain't nobody gonna watch this. <laughs> nobody's watching this nah, right no now. No one. This this is uh, nobody's gonna watch nothing. it. Nothing. So after that, I I literally lived off that um, nine grand for about the rest of the summer, and uh, I ended up moving to San Diego after that. Like I'm skipping some stuff, but I moved to San Diego, and that's when my life changed because I lived in San Diego and was just partying. What brought you to San Diego? I met a guy in Vegas during the, the night of the Floyd Mayweather fight and just party with him that night. And I just got his phone number one time, and then I was just, you know, staying in touch with him or whatever. And then he was like, I live in San Diego. He's in the Navy, Dr. Bill. And um, I literally said, let me come out there w one weekend. I was like, let me just come out there and kick it with you or whatever, because he was telling me how great San Diego was. And um, I went out there, and I, I didn't leave for four years. San Diego's pretty awesome. Yeah, I love San Diego. But I, I essentially was doing the same thing I was doing for the past couple years. Lost, because you got to understand, like, Athletes go through this now. Like I just did, I just released the episode with Ryan Bader on my channel, and I talked to him about that. Like when when your sports career is done, a lot of people go to something else. They lost and things like that. And I was for about four or five years, and it wasn't until I lived in San Diego that I figured I was like, man, I got to really do something with my life. I'm literally a failure. I got a, I have a college degree. I, I graduated from college. So it wasn't like I just didn't want that responsibility of having to do a nine to five or and things like that. So it wasn't until I lived in San Diego that I, I literally talked to the guy that I was living with and was like, bro, I, I don't know what I'm going to do in my life, bro, but I got to figure something out. I was like nearing 30 and um, I ended up moving to Minneapolis, back to Minneapolis and I got a job as a teacher, uh, like a teacher's assistant. Uh, they called it behavior assistant. I was like working with kindergarten kids. Jesus. Literally crazy life, right? What a crazy life. <laughs> to end up where I'm at now to be on Joe Rogan, right? So it it was March 3rd, two, 2011. Um, it was like negative 20 degrees outside. I was living with my guy, my best friend. And um, I went to work that day and it was freezing outside. And they literally still went to recess that day. I'll never forget that. It was like, oh, put your coats and gloves on, kids. It's time to go to to recess. And I was like, what do you mean? We going in the gym or outside? It was like, we're going outside. I was like, man, these people in Minnesota crazy. They're hard. Those are hard people, bro. That was the last day I ever worked in my life. You said, fuck this? I can't do it, man. I was you like, can't bro, be outside in that weather? It was just the fact that I was like, what am I doing with my life? I'm working with Kenneth. The great right. rewarding job. I'm like, what? I, it's nothing wrong with me. Right. I'm physically able to do anything. I'm intelligent enough to do anything. I'm qualified enough to do anything. You're a victim of circumstance. Victim things of, just kept happening. Things kept happening. Um, and a lot of it is my fault like because you're just lazy, right? So March 3rd, 2011 is the day I, I said I'm quitting at my job. I went back to my apartment with my roommate. He was pissed. He was like, bro, you always quitting jobs. <laughs> and he was like, bro, what you going to do? I was like, bro, I'm I'm finna figure something out. I'm finna buy a camera or do something. He was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. And and we literally was sitting in the kitchen, in this little kitchen on the floor talking about life. Because I was just tell, I literally mentally broke. I was like, bro, I'm just jacked. Like, I got to figure something out. I had, Pell Grant was coming up. I was getting my, my tax returns back. And I had enough to buy a camera. And the first camera I ever bought was a Canon T2i. It was like eight hundred dollars, and I bought a lens, and that was it. That was it. It changed my life, and I literally spent like the next year shooting videos in garages, like cars coming up, filming the wheels, and I was just really, literally honing myself. Because back then, when I had a camera in college, digital cameras weren't even out until two thousand and eight, like these little new style cameras. 
So I had to relearn everything. And I, I relearned a lot from YouTube and Vimeo. And I was watching. The, I had a creative eye and a, a mindset. So I was just like, I got to get the skill set. So I started doing rap videos for $50, $100, free. You know, I tell all these kids that message me now, like, bro, I spent two years doing videos for free. Just trying to learn how to do this stuff. Everybody want to get paid for something. And I'm like, you probably don't deserve to get paid yet. So I, I, I had friends, shout out to Mac Irv, Mr. Organic. Like I was shooting their videos for free and I was just getting better. I was just getting better and better and better and better. And then like three years into it, I shot a music video called Saks Fifth Avenue. And um, so you're editing these as well. I'm editing them, doing them all. What are you editing on? Uh, at the time I was editing on Sony Vegas. Mm, okay. uh, a old program now it, it, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's popular now it's, it's, it's pretty easy to use And um, it was cheap to buy Like 90 bucks So I was able to use that um, Like the movie studio version it was You don't get all the little tools But you got enough And I had this cheap laptop uh, That this girl bought me uh, She lied and told me she was going to buy me a camera And end up buying me a, a laptop I was pissed off <laughs> And I was like, she was like, listen, like the most popular can uh, camera back in like 2011 was like a Canon 5D Mark II. It was like $2,000. I couldn't afford that. So I met this girl online, <laughs> <laughs> literally from Jesus Denver, Colorado, God. from D Denver, Colorado. And, you know, you start your little love affair or whatever. You talking, you promising. And mm -hmm. I want to see you. So one day she was like. I'm going to come see you in Minnesota. This is around the time I started. And uh, she told me she was going to buy me that camera because I was telling her that's like my dream camera, my dream camera. And I remember my roommate, uh, like I run in his room like, look, bro, look at this short film that was shot with this camera. I'm finna have this camera, bro. We finna do all types of things. So she like kept telling me she had the camera, kept telling me had the camera. So like the day she came, I picked her up. I had this little used 1992 Ford Taurus. It was blue. And... Uh, <laughs> I picked her up at the airport. I remember, I was like, where the camera at? Soon as, she, <laughs> <laughs> soon, as soon as she picked me up, where the camera at? She was like, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. And I'm like driving, thinking like, man, she ain't got this camera. She lied to me. She just wanted to see me, right? So we get to my apartment. And my boy, he anticipating it too. He's like, man, he finna get this camera. We finna shoot all the music videos, right? Because if you get this camera at this time, you, oh, you shooting with a 5D? So... I remember she like put. She was like, "Here's a gift." It's like she put out the gift, and I'm like, "This ain't no camera box. It was a, a brand new laptop." And I'm sitting there complaining. <laughs> I'm complaining about a laptop, and I already have a camera. But right. she like gave me this laptop, and I was just like, "All right, cool." So she gave me the laptop, and I I get the Sony Vegas program, and then I started editing with that. And I had that camera for about two years. Where's I that girl? I don't know. <laughs> it's a lot of that in my life. <laughs> And I don't blame them girls. Listen, oh, man. Yeah, I used to be one of those guys. You know them gir them girls that's materialistic and they all about nice things and they like to travel. Or you ever date a girl and you like see her previous boyfriend and they be like, damn, they done went to like Napa Valley and mm -hmm. fucking Vegas for her, her birthday or uh, New that's York. All pressure. And you like, damn, I can't even take you to the movies. Mm. I'm like, damn. So for me, if a girl get tired of you. Now they call it ghosting, right? They right. call it ghosting. But back then, ghosting, that's what ghosting was. It was like, oh, this guy ain't worth nothing. Let me get rid of him. So she left. I, I, <laughs> she left. I had a summer job. I, my last ever official job was at 43 Hoops in Minnesota. It was a basketball academy where I was there with a lot of pro basketball players or semi-pro or guys that had college experience. And we just taught kids all the time. And um, I was getting paid you know, $20 an hour, $25 an hour per session to teach kids. And I kind of made a ruckus there too, complaining about just, bro, we teaching 20 kids and I'm only getting $20. How much are y'all getting for all these kids? Right. But I mean, that's just work, right? I shouldn't complain about a job, but that whole summer I was just telling everybody in there, I'm finna do film. I'm moving back to California. I'm about to just do film. I'm about to do film. Cause I had enough, like I was doing videos at that point, but now I have a part-time job and I'm able to do videos. And I never forget one day I, I was telling a group of guys in there, I'm quitting this job and I'm finna go do film. And I, I just remember the look on their face, like, you know, like the boy that cried wolf. Like, whatever, man, you ain't gonna do anything. But that drove me insane, Joe. Doubt. 
doubt drove people me. People doubting you. People doubted me. That's what I needed. I needed that fuel uh, where people t- could tell me I couldn't do anything. You needed haters. I needed haters. <laughs>